Welcome back, my green loving community, and what a pleasure it is to be back in front of you talking about the things that I love, the things that you love as well, and those are plants. Bringing nature into our homes, creating indoor jungles, making that vibe feel as vibrant and fresh and life-changing as we possibly can. And one of those plants that it seems like you guys just can't get enough of or you just can't figure out. What plant is that? Hmm, let me think. Oh yeah, it's the fiddly fig. You guys love the fiddly fig. I love the fiddly fig. The first plant I went out and purchased was a fiddly fig and that fiddly fig's name is Frank. Frank was one of the plants that literally showed me everything about how to care for a plant. Because of the challenges of the fiddly fig, it's what pushed me, put the fire in my belly to keep him alive and show me that I can keep other plants alive. So I understand the want to have a fiddly fig. It's a beautiful plant. So what I did was put out a post asking you guys what your issues were and how I could help. And I hope you're prepared because I'm about to drop all the fiddle leaf fig knowledge I have right here, right now. So let's start with how to care for your fiddle leaf fig. What I love about the fiddle leaf fig or the ficus errata if you want to get technical is how beautiful and large its green foliage can be. But what I'm truly attracted to is how unique they all are. That's probably why I care for five of them. We have Frank, Treasus, Clavel, Little Baby, and Francis. Yeah, of course they all have names. I mean, everyone should be naming their plants, right? They all have a different look, so they all deserve different names. I'm not sure they really like these names, but does that really matter? What is known is that the Philly Fig is a finicky plant, but because of how beautiful they are, that allure is insane, intense. You just have to bring it into your home. But understanding that fiddle leaf fig is to know that it's a very stubborn plant. It's like an old man set in his ways. It likes what it likes and you just better go with it or suffer the consequences. Better yet, your fiddle will be the one doing the true suffering. So let's start with some quick tips. The do's. Do place it in bright indirect light. Only water it when the top two inches of soil are dry and repot when the roots are peeking out of the drainage holes. The don'ts. Do not move it from one place to another and then to another because you're freaking out. Don't let it sit in water and please don't place it in direct sunlight. Speaking of light, let's talk about the best place for it. When you first bring your fiddle leaf home, you're gonna to wanna to place it in a spot where it can get bright and direct light. Bright and direct light is everything to every plant. To understand if your spot is getting this type of light is to check and see if your fiddle is situated in a spot with full exposure to the outside world but will never get kissed by direct sunlight. Bright and direct light is filtered or diffused light. While it's not preferred to have direct sunlight on your fiddle, morning sun is okay because it's cooler than afternoon light, which is at its hottest. Now that you found the best spot for light, instead of just ripping your plant out of its nursery pot and putting it in a new pot, you're gonna leave it in that nursery pot and place it in a pot that you plan to repot it in in the near future. Take a few pictures of it so that you can compare it in the future to what it looked like when you first brought it home. This will allow you to notice the slight nuances, the changes in the foliage and in the growth. Being able to refer back to earlier pics will help you in the long run. In the first few weeks of having the plant, a lot of changes will happen. Expect to see the lower leaves, the more mature foliage of the plant, start to die off. But don't freak out and start moving your plant around thinking that you have it in the wrong spot. This is just the plant acclimating to its new home. Remember, you just pulled it from the nursery that was definitely providing much more light than your home is. If you just let it acclimate once it's settled in, you should be fine. And so should your plant. When it comes to watering your fiddle, you have to understand that the fiddle is a tropical plant and only needs to be watered when the top two inches of soil are completely dry. My way to test this is to get dirty. Take your finger and stick it into the soil. This way you are now becoming one with the plant. If there's any dark soil on your finger, well, it's not time to water your plant. If you stick your finger in and you pull it out, dirt just falls off or there's not much dirt on your finger at all, then it's time to water your plant. While some prefer to use filtered water or rainwater, I just use lukewarm water straight from the tap. I slowly pour around the surface of the soil like a barista making pour over coffee. 
um, this will allow that water to trickle down past the soil grip onto those roots and once that water comes out of the drainage hole and into the base tray you've given your plant enough water allow that runoff water to sit in the base tray for about 15 to 30 minutes so that any of those roots and soil that didn't have the chance to absorb water can then do so after those 30 minutes are up, make sure to dump that access water out. Because the thing you don't want is for your fiddle to be sitting in water. When a fiddle is sitting in water, it's prone to get root rot. If your pot is too heavy to lift off the base tray, take a towel or a turkey baster to suck up that extra water. To me, when it comes to understanding my plants and knowing my plants, you create a special bond, right? But you also have to be aware of the changes, the way a plant talks to you. Yes, a set of plant talks to you, and they talk to you through their foliage and the colors and changes in them. One of those colors is yellow. A yellow leaf is a sign that a plant is being overwatered. To avoid this, just go back like a minute in this video to where I talked about how to water a plant. Another color to be aware of is brown, and now there are many, many shades of brown. Brown spots on the edges can be a sign that the plant is being underwatered or not getting enough light. So you're gonna to have to create a checklist. If you know for a fact that you're giving it enough water, then it might be the fact that it just isn't getting enough light or vice versa. Dark brown spots in the interior of the foliage is a sign of root rot. If you start seeing this take shape, act quickly. You'll want to pull the plant out of the pot and check its roots. If the roots are soft and blackish brown in color, that's root rot. Good roots are an off-white color and sturdy in feel. If you do have root rot, remove those damaged roots and place the plant in a new pot with fresh soil. Burnt brown spots. Now these spots can be on the edges or in the interior of the foliage. They are brown, orange in color and come from the plant being in direct sunlight and being sunburnt. Just like you, yeah, your plant can become sunburnt. To avoid this, move the plant into a spot that has dappled or filtered light or like I said earlier, a spot that has bright and direct light. There's no better spot for it. New growth is always an exciting sight to see, and it's a true sign that your plant is healthy. But ever so often, some new growth just emerges with red freckles. This is caused by edema, which means that that leaf absorbed too much water too quickly, and the cells in that foliage burst. That's what those red freckles are, the scars of those burst cells. But don't stress, most mild cases will fade as the leaf matures. To avoid this, stick to a watering routine. As the plant grows, so does its roots. So paying attention to your root growth is important. Once your roots start peeking out of the drainage hole, well, it's time to repot your plant. The best time to repot your plant is the day you plan to water it. It's much easier to move a plant with dry soil than it is with damp or wet soil. To start, make sure your new pot is two inches in diameter larger than the pot that the plant is in now. Grab a bag of all-purpose potting mix and fill a quarter of the new pot with fresh soil. Feel free to mix in a little cacti soil to help your soil dry a little faster if you're dealing with a pot that seems to want to hold on to moisture longer. The best type of planter for a fiddle leaf fig is terracotta or ceramic. These pots help to pull moisture away from the soil, helping the roots and the soil to dry in a good amount of time. Then, use a spade to help separate the soil and the roots from the pot. Gently pull the plant from the pot, hold the plant over its new pot, and break up the soil and roots so that the roots can move around freely in its new, larger home. Now, place the plant down into the new pot and add fresh soil around it. Leave about a half inch of lip at the top of the pot. Finally, water as you normally would. Make sure to give your plant a little love throughout the week in between waterings. One way to do this is by pruning it. Pruning involves removing all unwanted dead foliage that is hanging onto your plant. Take a sharp pair of shears and remove any yellow or browning leaves. While it won't kill your plant to let it naturally fall off, it helps to remove these dying leaves so that the plant can use that energy elsewhere. Like pruning, cleaning the leaves helps to make the plant look its best. Take some lukewarm water, mild dish soap, and a cloth to wipe your foliage down. This will help to take that layer of dust off and allow for as much light to hit the surface of your leaf. While some use products that help give their plant a little extra shine, I prefer to just clean the foliage and let it show off its natural shine. Lastly, make sure to keep the humidity level in your space up. If your home is dry, 
Adding a humidifier goes a long way. My favorite way to add humidity is by misting my plants, especially my fiddle. I try to mist from beneath the foliage so that the water can trickle down the stem of the plant and not get held in a pocket of new growth. There's something really relaxing about misting your plants. So, not only are they benefiting, but you are too. One of the best ways to promote new growth is by rotating your plants every three weeks. Branches that are closer to the window tend to develop new growth faster than those that are facing into the room with less light. So rotating the plant not only allows for each branch to get new leaves and keep the plant balanced, but also make sure that all of the foliage on the plant gets access to good light. Another way to promote growth is to fertilize your plants. While I don't recommend fertilizing the plant when you first bring it home, if you've had it over a year, fertilizing it will replenish the nutrients lost over the past year of waterings. While they do make fertilizer for fiddles, I use a basic fertilizer for all indoor plants. Changing out the soil also adds nutrients. If your fiddle is loving life and growing wild, that's amazing. But sometimes, when they grow too fast, it can cause the plant to tumble over from being too top heavy. To help give your plant a little support, you can use a wooden dowel to stake it or use Velcro to tie it up. I also use invisible hanging wire and tie one end to the branch and then I staple the other end to the wall or to a ceiling, or just tie it to an eye hook. This will help keep the branch upright and out of the way. As I mentioned earlier, fiddles can come in many different shapes. Some are bushes, which means a few branches in one pot, and some are just tree shaped. Some are just single tall branches coming out of a pot. When I first got Frances, she was just one branch. In order to start the branching process here, I took a sharp pair of shears and I cut the top three leaves off where the branch was still green. From where the cut was made, two new branches shot out. I later tried this again with the same results. While I started this process while she was small, I suggest you wait until your single branch is at least five to six feet tall to start. Now I know how stressful this can be, believe me, but not only are you encouraging your plant to grow more, you can then take that top piece that you cut off and propagate it, creating a whole new plant. Another way to encourage branching is by notching. To notch, you just have to find the node of the branch or locate the area right above the old leaf scar. Take your shears and score one eighth deep into the branch. You're going to want to wipe off any of that fiddle blood that comes out. This is toxic to pets and kids. If successful, from that score, over time, a new branch will develop. So yeah, that's it. The full-on Bible of sorts of how to care for your fiddle leaf figs. I hope you guys were taking notes. If you're gonna have this plant, fully know that you're gonna have to put a lot of effort into caring for it. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take management, just like you would your pets, your kids, yourselves. So, I hope this helps. Have fun. You enjoy watching Plant Doctor videos and getting these tips? Please subscribe to the Apartment Therapy channel.